والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنا يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز فوزا عظيما قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور Respected brothers and sisters, illuminate your hearts and your minds with the remembrance of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. A second one for our master, Al-Imam Al-Husayn alayhi salam. A third one for the love of Abel Fadl al-Abbas with your loudest of voices. <laughs> Throughout our lives, we easily get distracted. Basically, our lives, yes, with our career, with our work, with our social life, it's basically all distractions. When we face friends, family, relatives, when we're busy at work, we're distracted. When we're, th when we're with our family, we're distracted. Games, we're distracted. And nowadays, distracted with TikTok. So life nowadays, or it was, all it's all distractions. This is life. Now throughout our lives, have we ever wondered why are we here? Throughout our lives, have we, have we ever thought what is the reason for my creation? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create me? Now, inshallah, in today's lecture, in tonight's lecture, we will talk about those reasons from a Islamic, religious, Quranic perspective. Before I begin, I need a loud salawat upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messenger after a messenger, prophet after a prophet to guide us, to teach us, to clear the path, to guide the way. Without them, would we able to learn? Would we be able to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Tawheed, Adil, Nubuwa, Imam, Ma'ad? Would we be able to learn anything? Absolutely not. 
So prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and messengers sent them to guide us, to teach us. And through, through prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered questions like this that come to our mind. Through prophets, through Quran, through revelation, through divine scriptures, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers such questions. So that when we're in a problem, when we think we're lost, why are we here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the reason. Reason number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكْ وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ Allah says this in the Quran, and this is the first answer. The first answer, إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبِّكْ مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكْ Rahim comes from Rahma. Rahma means what? Mercy, love, compassion. So Allah loves us, that's why He created us. Allah loves us, that's why He created me in this world. Because He cares for me. He has compassion towards me. So this is the first purpose. And throughout, and through the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah loves us, Allah tests us, Allah tries us, Allah orders us to do things. This is all through the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants us to pass the test. He wants to show us mercy. He wants to teach us that not just through your actions, and we talked about this, I think, two, day, two nights ago, that not just through your actions you will pass the test. Not just through your actions you will succeed. No, it is through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rahmatullah. Wa rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. The rahmah, the blessings, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards His creation is the largest thing that you wouldn't even imagine. It has no size, limitless. And through the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we get closer to Him through our prayers, through our good deeds. Why do we come to the masjid? Don't we want to get closer to Allah through the Ahlul Bayt? Don't we want to get Allah closer to Allah through our fasting in the month of Ramadan? Through, by going to Hajj, we want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By doing any good deed, or else why would you do it? Because you have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you want to get closer to Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَابْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this phrase, Ittaqullah, be pious and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Choose to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't that from the love of Allah? Why, or else why would, he want, why would he want me, why would he want you to be closer to him if he doesn't love us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. That's why he's trying us. That's why he shows us mercy and compassion and love. اتقوا الله وابتغوا إليه الوسيلة. Have piety and get closer to him through وسيلة. وسيلة means the middle thing between us and Allah سبحانه وتعالى. وسيلة can be anything. وسيلة can be your صلاة. وسيلة صلاة gets gets you closer to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Through the أهل البيت we go to the shrine of Imam al-Hussein. We go to the shrine of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. From here, New Jersey, we remember Imam al-Hussein because we are getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through the Ahlul Bayt. Through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Through the Quran and through the family of the Prophet. Quran and Itra, we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the Prophet ordered us. So because Allah loves us, He wants us to get closer to Him. Another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be pious, actually be pious. حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ Actually. Don't think that when you come to the masjid, you have the mark on your forehead for 
from the turba, that's it, you're a mu'min. No, the mark, yes, it's a good sign. But don't just rely on that. Have taqwa, have piety, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through good deeds. And do not die only if you're a Muslim. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum Muslimun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqu Allah wa dharu ma bayna ma wa dharu ma baqiya min al-riba. Have piety. Get closer to Allah and leave all riba, the haram interest. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqu Allah in the Quran 89 times. Look what kind of a Lord we have. He loves us. That's why he's telling me be, pi be pious and get closer to me. Or else why would he tell me? Or else why would he tell us? Why would he tell the believers? Doesn't he love them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats it 89 times. That's other than Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu qumu ila salah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ati'u allaha wa ati'u rasul. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu awfu al-kayl. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu aqimu salata wa atu al-zakat. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep on teaching us? Keeps on teaching us. Because he loves us. Because he has compassion towards us. And that's why he created us. Reason number two I would like to talk about is this holy verse. Ya alladhi khalaq al mawt. And the verse that I, that I, rendered, that I read in the beginning. Tabarak alladhi biyadihi al mulk wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer. Alladhi khalaq al mawt wal hayat. Why? Why did he create mawt and hayat? Mawt means death. Hayat means life. Why did he create death? And why did he create life? لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا So that he can, so that he tries you. So that he tests you. Which one, which of you, O oh believers, is a hard worker? Now many people would say, so... If I'm a hard worker, if I go to work seven days a week, if I make this amount of money a week, if I do this, if I do that, that means I'm closer to Allah? No. That's not the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look at those who make more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't mean if doesn't mean that you're a hard worker if you lift heavier weights, if you drive a fancy car. If you make this amount of money, if you live in a fancy neighborhood, if if this, if that, absolutely not. Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. Those who have piety, those who fear Allah. You want to get closer to Allah? Your money is not going to get you closer. Your taqwa. What is taqwa? Piety. Be pious. Have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have respect and love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says this wonderful verse, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Hard working means, means that those who compete in serving people. Those who come to the masjid every single day and they face challenges, they have work, rather they come to the masjid and listen to the Musab of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Those who try their best to serve the community. Those, for example, he's a doctor and some of his cases, some of his surgeries, some of his, his treatments, he does it for free. Fi sabilillah, he wants to help. A lawyer tries to help in a good way, for a good cause. And who serves the community the most? Who does good deeds most? Who has piety the most? Allah says in the Quran, for example, you may not you may not make even a penny a day, but you save a life. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, it's as if you saved humanity, not just one life. This is taqwa. This is amal. Taqwa al-amal. There's something called taqwa al-amal. You have piety in your work. You have fear of Allah in your work. You have love towards Allah in your work. You're a hard worker to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to your boss. Yes, sure, be a hard worker. But at least have some piety. Be pious. Love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have compassion, just like He is showing you compassion and love. Who gave you your life? Who gave you wealth? Who gave you a family? Who gave you parents? Who gave you this? Who gave you that? Who protected you when you were little? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all of that. Another way to become a hard worker towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not just the amount of prayer. Yes, it's a good deed. Yeah, for example, someone comes and he says, pray 19 rak'ahs a day, 20 rak extra rak'ahs, pray salat al layl Yes, this is all good, but it doesn't mean that's it. Be a good communicate, communicator. When you talk to people, treat them with respect, treat them with honor. For example, volunteers, a couple wonderful young men come here to the masjid, serve. They have work, they have money, they don't need money. They come to the masjid, no one pays them. They help, they volunteer. This is a hard worker, fi sabilillah. This is a hard worker that has piety. I know there is a doctor MashaAllah, he has, he's wealthy. He goes to the masjid, he works extra hours to make more money, not for himself, not for his wife, not for his family. He makes more money to bring it to the masjid. And he pays the, the bills for the masjid. And he pays the expenses for the masjid. This is taqwa al-amal. This is piety at work. Another doctor I, I know as well, he works extra hours so that he spends on his elderly parents that live in a different city. This is taqwa al-amal. This is having piety. Work, Allah doesn't say, enjoy your money, mabruk. Inshallah, you'll enjoy it. But have piety. When Allah says, become a hard worker, become a hard worker towards this holy cause. Not just to serve yourself and serve your pocket and serve your wallet and that's it. You forget about the community. You forget about the needy ones. Unfortunately, many of us just think about ourselves. Just think about our pocket. What makes, what benefits me most? What helps my pocket? What helps my bank account? And right now, nowadays, when you want to go on Google, and write, who's the su most successful man? What pops up? Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and Bill Gates, and Mark Zuckerberg. So, hardworking, successful men, successful female, doesn't mean that they are hardworking with piety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He says, Yes, work towards a good cause. To serve. To bring money, not just to your pocket. To bring money to the community. To bring support to everyone. To your family. To your cousin. For example, your cousin. You know him. He lives in a different area. Help him. Maybe his class is not the same. Help him. Many of us just think about ourselves. And we think about our family as well. We don't think far. We don't look at our community's needs. We don't treat our community's needs. So this is taqwa al-amal. You have to have piety at work. You have to have piety at school. You have to have piety everywhere. Wherever you go. And the most successful man or the most successful women, doesn't mean that they have the most money. Billions and billions and trillions of dollars nowadays. 
doesn't mean that he's successful or she's successful. Absolutely not. Yes, they're rich. They're rich with money. They're not rich with other things. They're successful with money, not other things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at the amount of your serving, of your volunteering, of your helping towards others. A poor man that has no money, a poor lady that has nothing, can serve and provide. I find many people, they're rich, they're poor, they come, they serve the community. You see them in the masjid, they're cleaning. In the masjid, they're picking up the chairs. In the masjid, they go clean in the kitchen, they cook. He has a degree, he's cooking. Yes, at the masjid, serving about Abdullah al Hussein. That's an honor. I know a scholar, one day he entered a masjid to serve Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. It was the nights of Ashura. He was the scholar, he was the person that was supposed to sit on the mambar and educate people. And he, before everyone comes in, the masjid was dusty, the masjid, the masjid needed to be cleaned. He took off his amama and he started cleaning. This is an honor, especially if you're doing it towards Allah, especially if you're doing it towards Imam al-Husayn. Being pious, this, this is what it means. Have fear of Allah, and to Allah you'll do anything. Your dignity is not going to get lower. Your honor is not going to get decreased. When you clean at the masjid, when you clean up the shoes at the masjid, absolutely not. When you see something, you take, you pick it up. At a community center, helping elderly parents. Some people, I don't feel like do, taking that task. It's hard. I have to change them. I have to do this. The one who does it, it means that he's a successful man. The one who takes care of his old mom, his old dad, that one is a pious man. That one is a pious woman. They have taqwa al-amal. They have real taqwa. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So my dear brothers and sisters, <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a third reason. Reason number one was Allah's rahmah. Allah's mercy towards us. That's why he created us. And through taqwa we get closer to him. And number two is taqwa al-amal. He wants us to work. He wants us to become hard workers. But not just to serve ourselves and serve your pocket and drive that car and do this. Yes, enjoy it. Mabruk to you. But think about others. Think about serving. Think about volunteering. Reason number three. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly states in the Holy Quran, and I have not created jinn and ins, jinn and humankind, jinn and humans, only for what? They only have one task. What is that? إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Only so that they are worshipping. And now I ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, that Arabic-speaking brothers and sisters should know this. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Why doesn't He say, for example, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِلْعِبَادَةِ or إِلَّا لِيَكُونُوا لِعَابِدِينَ isn't it, isn't it the same meaning? Yes, it is the same meaning. But when you say, إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Ya'budun in Arabi means what? It's a present continuous verb, correct? Ya'budun is a present continuous verb. Means that it's happening constantly, continuously. It's not stopping, endless. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, illa liyakunu lil ibadah, or illa liyakunu li abideen. Abideen means that he worships Allah, then he goes and rests. Then he goes and sleeps. Then he travels. Then he does this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Illa, illa liya'budun. Wama khalaqtu al-jinn wal-ins. I haven't created them. 
only so that they are worshipping continuously, non-stop. What does that mean? That means when I go to when I go to sleep, I'm not worshipping Allah. Am I doing a bad thing? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're human. So Allah knows that we would have shortcomings. We would have shortcomings. But Allah expects from us, as soon as you wake up, as soon as you're awake, as soon as you can, you have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Allah. Worshipping Allah doesn't mean that you have to always be praying or you have to be fasting or you have to donate. Yeah, that is all wonderful and good and extra points. But worshipping Allah can be just remembering Him. Whole day, subhan, just say, subhanallah, astaghfirullah, mashaAllah. It's as easy as that. You don't want to hold the subha, say it in your heart. You don't want to say it just in your heart. This is the remembrance of Allah. Think about Allah. You don't even have to say anything. Think about Him. Think about the creation of Allah. This is a form of worshipping. Fearing Allah, just you fearing of Allah at any time in your life is a form of worship. I'm not going to do this because I know I have a Lord. I'm going to do this because I know I have a Lord. I refrain from haram because I know I have a Lord. That's a form of worshipping. Because you accept that you have a Lord. You do good, you know that your Lord will give you a great reward. So, this is all a form of worshipping. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. A hadith by the Holy Prophet, he says, وَإِنِّي لَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ سَبْعِينَ مَرَّةٍ مِنْ غَيْرِ ذَنْبِ don't we always say the Prophet is infallible? No sin, sinless. The Prophet, yes, he is infallible, but he says, Man them, which means he says, Astaghfirullah. He asks Allah for forgiveness 70 times every single day. The Prophet of Allah, the best man who stepped foot on this earth, asks Allah for forgiveness 70 times a day without doing anything wrong, without committing any mistake. Why? Because this verse explains وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ So that they're continuously, constantly worshipping. Rasulullah is a human. He has shortcomings just like us. Shortcomings, not sins. Don't take me wrong. Shortcomings means that he sleeps. Shortcomings mean, means that sometimes he's speaking with others. He's not worshipping Allah. He's the Prophet of Allah. Yes? He's a human, he sleeps. So Allah, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi asks Allah for, for forgiveness without committing a sin. It's not a sin because we are human. So our mission in our life, our purpose in our life is because Allah shows us love, because Allah wants us to be hard workers toward a, towards a holy cause and to worship Allah continuously. To worship Allah constant, constantly. Li'abudun. Present verb. Very clear. So that you are worshiping Him on a daily basis. Every single second of your life, Allah expects you that you're worshiping Him. Remembering Him. Loving Him. Having piety. So this is what the ayah tells us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to tell the Prophet, you don't have to worship that much. The Prophet used to wake up at night, pray hours and hours more than us. Salat al-Layl was wajib for him. Then Allah tells him, you don't have to do that much. Allah tells him, Taha. In Surah Taha, Taha ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'ana litashqa. Don't kill yourself. Don't pray that much. You're a human. You would have shortcomings. You have to sleep. You have to work. You have to make money. You have to speak to people sometimes. So Allah expects from us to worship Him at least when we are awake. At least when you can, when you don't have anything. Many of us don't have a lot of things. Yes, at work, carry a subha. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't carry a subha, do it in your heart. Just remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have Allah in your life. 
just like your wife, your, you love your wife, your mom, your, any person that you love in your life is always in your mind. Correct? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who loves us, the one who has blessed us with everything, small to big things, simple things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Don't we have to love him? Don't we have to show him compassion? Remember him at least. Don't pray, remember him. You can't pray, remember him. Have him in your mind always, 24-7. This is our Lord, Jalla wa'ala. Now, I would like to mention that a summary of what we've talked. Allah, so, so our purpose in our life, every person has a purpose. Whether you have distractions, you get busy, you work, you study, you play games, you're on TikTok, you're on wherever, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're on TikTok while scrolling, remember Allah. What's wrong with that? You go to school, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Read Surah Al-Fatiha, read Surah Al-Ikhlaq. Think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a solution for this, my dear brothers and sisters. We have to put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives. Every second. Think about Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need us when He tells us, think about me, love me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to get closer to Him, not because of His needs. Astaghfirullah. We need Him. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy because without our, only with our actions and only with our deeds, we will not succeed. This is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Zayn al Abidin says in Dua Abi Hamza al Thamali, he says, Aw la'allaka ra'aytani alifa majalis al battalin fabayni wa baynahum khalaytani. Or probably or perhaps you saw me sitting with us with the sinning individuals, with the people who commit sins. I'm just sitting with them. I'm not doing anything. I'm not committing a sin. So you considered me one of them? You won't accept my amal? He's not complaining. He's saying this out of repentance, asking Allah for forgiveness. So we have to always remember Allah. Always remember Allah. I'm not saying this as an advice. This is an order by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Always have your Lord in your mind. Always have Allah in your heart. Wherever you go, wherever you are, Allah should be with you. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, just like everyone has a purpose, and we have multiple reasons why we're here, and we just like we mentioned them, we know that every person has a reason. Now, today, I want to take your hearts to the plains of Karbala for a man who was created for a reason. A man... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him. He was born for one purpose. And that is our master, the flag bearer, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, salamullahi alayhi. On the eve of Ashura, Sayyidah Zainab is outside the tents, in the middle of the night, in the darkness of the night. She's outside the tents. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas is on his horse. Riding his horse, walking around the tents, protecting them. Just in case someone comes near, he will stop them. He is the bodyguard. He is the personal bodyguard for Imam al Hussein and for Sayyidah Zainab. Without his protection, no one would fear them. This is how Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, they used to fear him. This is how he was literally the signal of the army of Imam al Hussein, the standard of the army of Imam al Hussein. Hamil al Lua, the standard of the army of Imam al Hussein. Now, Sayyidah Zainab, Abu al Fadl al Abbas, gets close to Sayyidah Zainab and he sees like 
someone wearing black. He feels like it's one of the enemies. So he screams, Man ant, who are you? Sayyida Zainab gets closer and closer. Al Abbas is not seeing her. He doesn't know if it's a man or, or a woman. He takes his sword out and he gets closer and he screams, Man ant, who are you? Sayyida Zainab tells him, I am your sister Zainab. I am your sister Zainab. I am the daughter of your father, Amir al Mu'mineen. He tells her, O oh, sister Zainab, why are you out in the middle of the night? God forbid someone comes from the enemies and they get close to you. Why are you out? Get, in, get inside your tent. She tells him, Oh, my brother, I like seeing you. I like to watch you and you're on the horse with your sword out. This get, gives me joy and compassion when I look at you. I feel like you're my father, Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. You, without you, O Abel Fadl al Abbas, they will attack us right now. They fear us because of you. Salam alaikum. Abel Fadl al Abbas, alayhi salam, orders her to get into the tent. Sayyida Zainab tells him, Wait, let me just tell you one story. Oh, my brother Abbas. She tells him, Oh, Abbas, I want to tell you the story of how you were born. What is your purpose? I want to tell you what is your purpose. Why were you created? And this is our topic. Why were we created? Abel Fadl al-Abbas had a purpose as well. Sayyida Zainab tells him, you, had, you have a mission. So do not have any shortcomings when you're protecting your brother. She knows he will not. She's just saying it out of encouragement and out of love towards her brother Abbas. Abel Fadl Abbas takes his sword and he tells her, Oh my sister, you're encouraging me? I don't need any encouragement. Atushajjini? Of course. Now she tells him, let me tell you the story. Oh my brother Abbas. When our mother Fatima al-Zahra died, Amir al-Mu'mineen, my father, ordered his brother Ali, uh, ordered his brother Aqil to find him a lady. Amir al-Mu'mineen tells his brother Ali, Aqil, he tells him, O oh, Aqil, اخطب لي امرأة ولدتها الفحولة من العرب. What does that mean? Imam Ali alayhi salam asked his brother Aqil to find him the most courageous and the most brave lady that comes from a brave tribe. Aqil, his brother, tells him, Oh Amir al Mu'mineen, oh Ali ibn Abi Talib, you don't need this, oh my brother. You don't need a lady that's brave. Well, you, you want her to fight? You want her to be in the middle of the battlefield? He tells him, No, oh my brother. I want inni uridu an addakhira minha ghulaman addakhiruhu liyawm al shiddah. Oh, some people said. I want to have a child from her. Allah will give me a child from her to protect me when I need him and to protect my son Hussein alayhi salam. So she tells him, Oh my son, Oh my brother Abbas, when you were born, when Umm al banin gave birth to you, Amir al Mu'mineen saw you, he carried you, he started kissing you. The women of the Hashemites started looking at your face and they said, What a moon this baby is! The Qamar of Bani Hashem, the moon of the, Hash the Hashemites. Abel Fadl al Abbas salam, was nicknamed the moon of the Hashemites. Saqi Utasha Karbala, the one who quenched the thirst of the people in Karbala, the one who protected the army of Imam al-Hussein, the standard, the flag bearer 
of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. She told him, When my father Amir al Mu'mineen carried you, he looked at your hands. La ilaha illallah. He looked at the hands of his baby Abbas and he started kissing his right arm and his left arm. Umm al Banin, this is her first child. Amir al Mu'mineen is flipping his arm, he's looking at it. He started kissing it. Umm al Banin tells him, Oh my master Ali, is anything wrong with his hand? Is anything wrong with his right arm? Is anything wrong with his left? He tells her, no, nothing's wrong. But I am crying for those hands will be cut on the day of Ashura. For those hands will be separated from his body. This is Mawlana Abul Fadl al-Abbas. Saqi Utasha Karbala. The bravest man from the army of Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam. On the day of Ashura, when this brave man saw that Qasim has died, Qasim has been killed, Ali al Akbar is killed, the companions are killed, no one is left with Imam al Hussein. He's the, he was the only old man, adult man, protecting Imam al Hussein. He was the only male with Imam al Hussein. He tells him, Oh my brother, oh my Imam, I cannot, I can't long, I can't stay in this situation. I can no longer see your kids and my kids and the women and the children crying, screaming, Al Atash, Al Atash, out of thirsty. Abel Fadl al Abbas sees his brothers being slaughtered in front of him, his companions, his friends, his family, his nephews, all of them being killed and slaughtered. He tells him, please allow me to go and to take some revenge for my brothers and my nephews. Imam al Hussein tells him, Ya akhi, anta sahibu liwa'i, anta hamilu liwa'i, wa anta al-alamatu min askari. You are the sign of my army. If you disappear, if you, there's no more Abbas, there's no more army. There's no more protection for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. أنت صاحب لوائي والعلامة من عسكري فإذا ذهبت تفرق جمعنا إلى الشتات. If you disappear, if you're killed, there is no more army for Imam Al Hussein. He tells him, at least, please allow me. He kept on insisting on Imam Al Hussein. He tells him, okay, if you go, you have a mission. You have to come back. If you go, you only get water and come back. You're not going to fight. You're not going to be killed. You're not going for revenge. You go, take water and come back. Abel Fadl al-Abbas gets on his horse and goes towards the Alqami. He gets near the water. Near the river of Furat, where four thousand soldiers are standing to, to not let him get near the water. Abil Fadl al Abbas gets as soon as he gets closer, the four thousand they divide into half out of their fear from Abil Fadl al Abbas. He enters in the middle of them without fighting, with no need to fight. And he's screaming and yelling, Inni ana al-Abbas aghdu bis-siqa wa la akhaf al-shar yawm al-multaqa nafsi l-nafs al-tahir al-tahri biqa Inni ana al-Abbas aghdu bis-siqa wa la akhaf al-sharr yawm al-multaqa As soon as he gets near the water, he enters in the water. He pulls his hand, he, he takes his hand and he takes water with his hands. فَاخْتَرَفَ غُرْفَةً مِنَ الْمَاءِ he put water in his hands, carries it. 
Then he remembers the, then he remembers his brother and the thirsty kids and women from the camp of Hussein. He screams, never, I will never drink water if my brother is thirsty. I will never allow my chest to be quenched with water if my brother and my nieces and my nephews are thirsty. He puts water in the water canteen, in the water canteen and he gets back on his horse. He takes a shortcut to get near the camp of Hussein. As he is passing by a palm tree, someone is hiding behind it. He strikes the hand, the right arm of Abbas. Wa Sayyida, wa Abbas. Everyone with me. Wa Abbas, wa Sayyida. Please, everyone, help me with your voices. Wallahi in. قطعتم يميني والله إن قطعتم يميني إني أحامي أبدا عن ديني. He he tells them even if you cut my right arm. I will keep on defending my faith. I will keep on defending my master Hussein as he continues to get near the camp of Hussein. One of them hides behind a palm tree and strikes his left arm. Aywa Abbasa, Aywa Sayyida, Aywa Shahida. He screams, Ya Nafsula. تخشي من الكفار وأبشري برحمة الجبار قد قطعوا ببغيهم يساري فأصلهم يا رب حر النار He tells He's, he's basically talking to his soul. He tells his soul, Ya nafs, do not fear the kuffar. Do not fear the enemies of Hussein. For you will be, your chest will be quenched from hawd al in the heavens. And Allah will punish the enemies of Imam al Hussein. While he doesn't, he doesn't have a arm to fight with. His sword is not with him. They strike the water canteen with an arrow. They strike the left eye of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. And then one of them named Hakim ibn al-Tufayl comes behind Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and strikes his head. Everyone with me. Aywa Abbasa. Aywa Sayyida. As soon as... Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas falls onto the ground. He screams, Akhi adrik akhak. Oh my brother, come to rescue your brother Abbas. Imam al Hussein comes very fast. As soon as he sees Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas laying on the plains near the al he screams, Alan in Kasara Zahri, Wakalat Hilati, Washamutabi Adumwe. In Allah, who in Allah, Rajaun, Walla was a Yalamu Ladina, Dolamu, Ala Muhammadin, Aya Munkalib, and Yankalibun, while Akibatul Mutakin. My dear brothers and sisters, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas is Bab al-Hawa'ij. He is our Qadi al-Hajat. He accepts out. Through him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts our dua and accepts our a'mal. So please raise your hand in the name of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. يا الله يا الله يا الله 
اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين واخذل الكفر والمنافقين أيد وسدد حماة الدين عجل فرج إمام زماننا Please stand on your feet اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى في هذه الساعة وليا ارحم الراحمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين